Hey everyone, it's Dimpney here with this week's Intelligent Property Investor Masterclass. Now, the reason I do these masterclasses is so that you can be more intelligent about your decisions when it comes to real estate. There's a lot of rubbish being uh, propagated around the, uh, the mainstream media and this podcast series is really about getting to the nitty gritty of what's going on and specifically what it means for property and what it means for you as an investor in property. So if you're listening to me on a podcast, I really super encourage you to go across to my website or my YouTube channel and to have a look at the charts because I'm going to show you a lot of data. I'm going to show you a lot of charts. um, And I really want you to get across that stuff so that you can make better decisions because better decisions make better profits. So let's get into it. What's going to, what are we going to cover this week? Well, first up, I want to talk about why some experts are getting totally blindsided by a property boom that's going to happen in one particular city. I wonder which one that is. I'm going to be talking about the RBA told off the markets this week and why that means that easy money boom is here to stay. Boy, did they give the markets a dressing down. uh, I'm going to talk about why uh, buyers are beating down people's doors and why that's got real estate agents not just nervous but whinging. Um, What online search activity for property is booming and what that means for property prices. And I want to talk about why builders are going bust in record numbers and what that will do to property prices over the next 18 months. That's something I've been talking about for a a few weeks now, um, probably a few months actually, when we started to see timber prices and all those things start to go. I said, oh my goodness, this is an indicator that a lot of uh, builders are going to get caught in the middle here. But I'll get to that a little bit later on. Let's start with the RBA, the Reserve Bank of Australia. They gave the markets an absolute dressing down during the during the week. It was a thrashing, and uh, Phil um, uh, Phil Rowe came out. Who's the, who's the chair of the RBA? He came out and said that uh, the pro- that interest rates are not going to go up, and he was particularly concerned about how markets were pricing in interest rate hikes. Now this goes right through from. Um, you know, from the banks and and the and the assessors in the banks and the valuers and you know even uh, valuations on on um, on uh, big REITs where you've got uh, big unit trusts that own commercial properties and things like that that they you know weren't expected to do quite as well because interest rates are going to go up. Well, they're not. Let you know what he was saying was that um, th- that the earliest that he could see interest rates start to rise would be in 2024. (laughs) Not 22, not 23, but 2024. And he also admitted that um, that the, uh, the house prices are going to boom because of the low interest rates. And it was like, too bad, so sad, basically was what he was saying. But it's not his problem. That's what he actually said. House prices are gonna boom, but it's not my problem. Rates will stay low um, for a prolonged period of time, which means that the boom will also have a prolonged boom period. He went on to say that uh, our judgment is it will take some time for wage increases to lift to a rate that is consistent with achieving the inflation target. This judgment stands in contrast to the expected path of the cash rate implied by market pricing. This is what he said. These expectations are difficult to reconcile with the picture I have outlined. And I find it difficult to understand why rate rises are being priced in next year or early 2023. He went on to say that on house prices, the RBA governor said he wanted to make clear, so these are really strong words from him, make clear it was not a bank's agenda to use interest rates, interest rate increases to slow booming house prices, which are expected to grow by upwards of 20% this year, closer to 30 in my opinion, in some cities anyway. Uh, while it is true that higher interest rates would all else equal, uh, see lower house prices, they would also mean fewer jobs and lower wages growth, Mr. Rowe said. 
citing the importance of low interest rates to, uh, to business growth. He said, this is a poor trade-off in the current circumstances. Whoa, did the markets cop it during the week? I don't think I've seen him come out and be as forceful in his words uh, for a very, very long time. Because look where we're sitting. You know, interest rates are right down here at 0.1%. And this, this is a good chart because it goes back to the um, mid-90s there. And you can see where interest rates have been. If we went back to the 80s, they would be almost three times. It would have peaked three times where these interest rates are. But we're not in the 80s. We're in the 2020s and interest rates are in a low interest rate period for quite some time. And I believe at least the first uh, half of the 20s. So good times ahead, big uh, property increases are on the back of that. When we start to have a look at the average uh, mortgage rates across a, a number of owner occupiers and investment rates, etc. Now these are average, but of course there are some that are down in the ones. You know, you can get a, a home loan for an owner occupier in the ones these days. That is just unheard of in my complete professional career, which is pretty getting pretty long in the tooth now. But the other thing that came out as part of his talks was he was talking about the RBA and printing money. And uh, this just shows their balance sheet and shows how they are continuing to print money. Now, we did have a bit of a pullback where they were printing $5 billion a week. Oh, heavens, we pulled back to $4 billion a week. It's still a bucket load of money. That's a lot of money that's being pumped out into the economy. And what it's doing, it's creating big cash reserves across the country. And, uh, you know, that's where's that money going? It's going into property. So that's pushing up house pricing. Let's get on to the next thing. Buyers in lockdown are starting to get really, really desperate. Now, you can see in the little picture there, I've got an auctioneer with his green screen behind him and he's doing it all virtually. But the reality is that a lot of auctions have actually been withdrawn. So a lot of buyers are, are, sell, I mean, are getting a little bit jittery and they're going, oh, geez, you know, I, I think we'll just put, we'll put it back on, on the market when we get out of lockdown. There'll be more buyers. Well, in actual fact, there's plenty of buyers. And buyers that are actually targeting those properties that have been withdrawn from auction and they're actually sneaking out of lockdown and going around and knocking on people's doors and saying, I want to buy your house. Now, this has even got to the point where real estate agents are starting to whinge and they're starting to whinge publicly because, you know, they're losing their listings and the listings are pretty thin on the ground at the moment. Uh, because people want to get out there and they want to, to you know, start buying because there's plenty of demand and a very limited supply. So it's creating a, a pressure cooker situation. Uh, Ray White Victoria and Tasmania Chief Executive uh, Stephen Dullen said that red hot demand from buyers and extended ban on uh, inspections in Melbourne, in contrast to Sydney where private one-on-one -on -one appointments are allowed, are starting to create unforeseen issues. With the lockdowns in Melbourne continuing to extend, we're seeing more and more customers becoming desperate with an urgent need to buy, sell or lease a property. Across the industry, concern, concerningly, we see more and more examples of customers taking matters into their own hand, which is this going around and door knocking. And this is why I mean, Sydney, this is, this is the 12 months ago. So 12 months ago, this was, this was the difference between how many properties were listed 12 months ago to what they're being listed now. Now, you've got to remember, 12 months ago, we were still in COVID. So imagine the difference between now and two years ago when we were in a normal year. But even against last year's figures, 28% down in Sydney for listings. Melbourne is actually a little bit up, but this is misleading because 2020, Melbourne was in such harsh lockdowns. Melbourne, uh, 2020 figures were so bad. Uh, but if you went back to 2019, uh, yeah, 2019, you'd see a marked difference there. 29% down in Brisbane, 23% uh, in Adelaide. Perth down 16.6. Hobart's down 36.3. Darwin's actually up a little bit and Canberra's down nearly 40% as well. So supply is still a major, major issue. There simply isn't enough supply for the demand. 
Now, that's what this is actually showing in a, in a graph rather than on the chart. You can see here how listings are so much lower than they have been in, uh, you know, in previous years. And if you go back to the light blue one, that's a, a 2019 year. Now, even in that year, pricing was, was a bit lower because of the APRA restrictions. Go back to 2016, which would have been a normal year, lots more listings there. A little bit normal anyway, because it was when uh, we had the foreign buyers being able to borrow in Australia. So the average uh, view per sale and uh, view per listing is massively up you know this goes back to february of 2017 and you can see how many people looked at the at properties uh in the varying states look where they are now now look at the two up here they're victoria and um and new south wales now the reason for this is of course they're all in lockdown or a lot of them are so what are they doing with their time they're experiencing real estate porn <laughs> that's what i call it just looking just looking your window shopping just looking um, it's real estate porn. It's not research. It is not investigation. It's not due diligence. It's real estate porn. So we're seeing a lot more uh, people just out there looking. But when you look, of course, it creates desire. And that creates more and more and more and more and more demand. Another uh, lot of figures that came out was really on demand. And demand is still very, very strong right across the board. So demand's up, supply's down prices are going up, end of story. And with interest rates remaining low for such a long period of time, it's not going to stop anytime soon. Which is why I, I, you know, you've got to, to take responsibility here. And your responsibility is, is to be financially, um, financially sensible, financially responsible. And being financially responsible, you've got to get educated. There is no way that you can afford not to anymore. Because there are mistakes out there to be made. There's a lot of things that you should not be doing, you should not be buying. And, the, you know, on top of that, there, there's, there's a whole bunch of deals that will make you an absolute fortune. You've got the opportunity to replace your income in the next two to five years. You've got the opportunity to build massive portfolios in the next two to five years. But you won't do it unless you step up and get yourself educated. Now, look, I run the largest real estate education organization in Australia and you know we we cover everything from how to do a renovation as to how to do a commercial property how to do a, a, a sizable development everything else in between as well as all the fundamentals things like tax and asset protection and legals and contracts and and the way to, to do financing and and uh, set up joint venture agreements all sorts of things everything is covered as well as and this is something that you don't get anywhere else and that is strategic planning. Planning is so, so important. You've, you've got to be able to map out your next two years of investing. And it's, it's not going to be any one style of deal. You know, buying something, hoping it's going to go up in value is not going to serve you because you're going to run out of serviceability and you'll get stuck. So it's really being able to plan, being able to balance off the income and the growth and have all of the fundamentals right. So to that end, I have set aside my advisors to talk to you about how we can help you. Um, they're hour-long sessions. All you have to do, they're free. All you have to do is go to iloverealestate.tv forward slash questions forward slash. Have a chat to them. No obligation. Have a look at what we offer, what we can do to really get you cranking through this period of time. Anyway, let's get back to the, the masterclass. Number three is why are builders going bust? I mean, we're in the middle of a building boom. We've got lots of contracts. They've got lots of business. Why are they going bust? Well, this is why they're going bust. Have a look at this. Um, this is an article that came out during the week from Business Insider and it says, it will be biblical. That's a pretty strong word. The construction industry is bracing for failed businesses and half-finished homes after the boom. Um, uh, more reports of builders going bust despite the boom. Grants have created huge demand, which, which then is creating bottlenecks and uh, crunching margins. Because at the same time, contract labour's gone up, materials have gone up, and they're in locked-in contracts that they can't get out of. Um, if, builders do, uh, if builders go bust, we could have further supply-side problems in 18 months, creating further price pressure. 
The article went on to say that it is the perfect storm. Excess demand is creating shortages that are destroying all net profit uh, builders were expecting to make. Material shortages are sk have skyrocketed pricing. And um, you know, he went on to say that you know, their estimates, as many as three out of every five construction companies is currently making a loss, whether they know it or not. Um, most don't realise it because they signed fixed contracts ahead of time and don't account for unforeseen costs. The longer these jobs go on, the bigger the blowouts are going to be. Oh boy. Um, why three out of every five, we said that, and most, as I said, don't even realise it. So, you know, we're looking at the building shortages, we're looking at all of this stuff, and it's like, oh my God, you know, we're, we're heading for a disaster here. So this is, again, it's all about education. It's about knowing how to mitigate that. It's knowing how to, to research and, and know who you should be using and who you shouldn't be using. I mean, uh, look, I'm, I'm out there all the time and the word on the street is even some of the big boys, they're actually going out. So rather than lose, you know, 20 or 30 grand on a build, they're going back out and they're buying back contracts. So someone who's signed a contract with a, a, a builder on the, on the block of land, they're saying, look, we're not going to be able to finish this in a time frame. It's going to take four years to complete or something ridiculous. Um, we will buy back that contract for 10 grand. We'll give you 10 grand now and you can go and find another builder. We've just got too much on our books. And a lot of people are taking it. Now, that's what some of the big boys are doing just to, just to mitigate their losses. So this is huge. It's absolutely huge. And, you know, if they're doing that, a lot of the smaller builders who aren't on, you know, on top of their accounts, they are, uh, you know, they probably don't even realise that they're trapped in this loss-making scenario. Now, look, I've been around for long enough to have seen this many times before. And I remember back in the accountancy practice days, you know, I had builders come to me saying, I think I'm going broke. And like, like new clients to me going, I, I just don't understand. I, I, I've got all these contracts. I've done so well. I think I'm going broke. And you look at the figures, you say you're going broke, you know, and, and, and then just trying to mitigate that loss for them. So, it's, it's, not, it's going to continue. This is what another article that came out with uh, G.J. Gardner talking about um, previously took four months to build and now is taking between six to 12 months. We could have a house sitting there for two to three months with just a slab and nothing happening because we are waiting on frames. Um, he went on to say, even though uh, Mr. Ellett is building twice as many homes this year compared to last year, he will make the same amount of money. He said that he is losing money on all the 60 homes his company is building due to unforeseen material price increases. Uh, I'll go on down, down here. It is hard to explain to people that during a building boom, builders are going bust and could even go bankrupt. So if they don't have the reserves, if they don't have the ability to be able to, to you know, go through this period, yep, they're looking at potential bankruptcy. Now, the other thing that I want to point out here is that a lot of these, um, a lot of these builders, A, don't realise it, uh, and, and a lot of them, you know, they'll try and do the right thing, they'll try and trade through it, which could actually mean a worse scenario for you. So... You've got to be cautious. Um, there's a lot to learn in this space. Am I still building? Yeah, I am. I am still building. but uh, And my students are still building. But they know how to do the analysis and due diligence on their builders to make sure that you know, their projects are actually going to be finished. They've got the, the escape clauses in their contracts and things like that to be able to, to see through any unforeseen um, you know, things that might happen. So uh, it's not a time to be uneducated out there in the marketplace. A lot of things can go horribly wrong. Um, these are just approvals. Now, approvals are down. That's because look at this hike. That was the builder's grant. You see there, that was a massive builder's grant, um, first of all, to December and then to March. And then we had this, uh, this drop-off. So there's not as many building approvals going through because most people, they'll go to a builder, oh, I don't know what this house build. Sorry. You know, I won't be able to sign a contract until mid-next year. <laughs> That's what they're getting. 
that's the sort of stuff they're getting. Just to give you an example, we ordered some, because, you know, we do a fair bit of building. Um, we ordered some trusses for a particular job. And uh, what would normally take uh, a month to six weeks, we were waiting like three months for these trusses to the point where it was like, let's make our own trusses, you know. And that's what we've come to. That's where we're at. This is the, uh, the, the drop in residential approvals um, and that's the last few months and that is because of the builders booth not being there anymore and that is going to cause major problems. So it's not a time to be uneducated out there in the marketplace. Why my money is on one capital city. What is it? It's actually Brisbane. Now, a lot of the, um, a lot of the talk is around uh, Melbourne and look I'm keen on Melbourne too I might add because you know they haven't had the increases in pricing that most other capital cities have since uh, COVID started and a lot of that is due to their lockdowns um, and and look I'm, I'm still very bullish on um, on Melbourne but actually when you look at the fundamentals Brisbane is still super super strong so we have a look at here. these are predicted house uh, price values over the next uh, 12 months and this is put out by CoreLogic um, uh, from data that they've, they've gleaned from the Reserve Bank of Australia. So, uh, you know, the percentage increases, this is 12 months from uh, June to June. So it's partly what's, what's happening now um, and then partly what they expect to happen next year. We're still talking, you know, pretty reasonable figures here. But when you look at affordability, this is the Brisbane affordability compared to Sydney. Mu you know, our prices are much, much lower. When you compare it to Melbourne, we're still much lower. Even though Melbourne's cheaper, we're still much, much lower. And therefore, affordability is easier. And now that we have an acceptance of, um, you know, remote work and other things, because that's always been the downfall of Brisbane, is that we don't have the, the jobs that other places do. Um, and they're finding, well, it's better to have an employee out of lockdown than it is to, to uh, have an employee in lockdown, even if they're millions, of, you know, thousands of miles away. But this is the true story because that green line there is the immigration into Brisbane. So you can see we've had this steady increase even back as far as 2013, um, this increase in population into Queensland and it's mainly South East Queensland. Then we have the red line being Melbourne. Well, Melbourne was declining anyway. Then it had a levelling out and then COVID hit. Look what happened. Mass exodus from Victoria. Brisbane, um, again, it's a bit of a steady decline and most of those people are obviously going to Queensland. Um, a bit of a kick up there to uh, the end of 2019 and this little drop off here is COVID. So not as many people leaving the Sydney quarters as they are leaving um, the Melbourne and Victorian quarters. Uh, but the big winner here, of course, is, um, is Queensland. Now, it really, I think the crunch is going to come a little bit further down the track as to whether these movements become permanent or not. Because it's much, much easier to live out of lockdown than it is in some of the other southern states. Um, and, uh, you know, is it a permanent move? Are they going to go back when things settle down or not? And that's still up for, for question at the moment. And these are new, um, uh, new mortgages in, um, in Brisbane. You can see they're massive new mortgages there in Brisbane versus the, uh, the increase in pricing. So that's a really good indicator where you're looking at the difference between how many new mortgages are going out, which means which tend to indicate that it's going to be a permanent move, not a short term move, unless they're just buying an investment property or something they'll turn into an investment property down the track compared to how much the prices have increased. And you can see how when you've had an increase in lending, pricing tends to flow on from that. Look at that peak over there. Look at this peak here. Look at that peak there. Same thing, same thing, same thing. And look at this. Not yet. So these, this is a really good indicator to show that the likelihood is that there's a lot more upside in the, uh, the Brisbane pricing and up to the 30% is what this chart would indicate. Not that I'm saying it's 100% accurate, but well, it's accurate in its figures, but its predictions are, are still up there. But, but if you look at historical performances, that's what we would expect. Certainly high 20s. So it's interesting. You know, there's, there's a lot of good stuff happening. I was chatting to my niece this morning um, and talking about the varying markets and, of course, grid variance analysis, which is one of the analysis I ask you to do in order to determine what areas you should be buying in. It's a mathematical formula. 
You know, it's a, it, 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 there isn't room for deviation. And that's the kind of education you need. It's not about, um, oh, you know, my grandmother's dog said this area is going to go up in value. That's long gone. It's, it, it, there's, there's core fundamentals underneath that, uh, that will give you answers. You know, there, there shouldn't be any uncertainty in what you're doing or what your pricing should be or what you should pay for a property or what you should be buying or where you should be buying because there's formulas for that. And that's the type of stuff that we teach you, really, really good, solid um, stuff that you need to know in order to be an intelligent property investor. So I'm going to end off with um, a, bit of a, uh, a bit of an over, overarching view on things. And that is, to, this quote here is, to grow yourself, you must first know yourself. So many people act out of ignorance arrogance um, and, uh, you know, not, not, not even giving enough thought process to what they do. Now, the first thing you've got to do is know what you, what you, what you want. Who are you? What do you want? How do you want to live your life? What's it going to be in five years' time? Because only you can come up with that answer, you know, and so many people don't even spend the time to actually work out what they want. So once you know what you want then we can start putting some strategic plan in place to actually get there. But your job is to know what you want, get yourself educated, and then apply that education. And we've got a massive support team um, in I Love Real Estate. We've got a massive um, you know, learning platform and, and ongoing. There is no stop. It's not just a one seminar, one this, one that. No, it's, a, it's an ongoing training program with coaching and everything else. So look, I want you to, uh, to make one of those breakthrough appointments. Um, they're free. They're about 60 minutes long. Talk to one of my advisors about how you um, might be able to slot into what we do and how you can get huge benefits and uh, by applying that information and, and that knowledge into the market. So that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed the masterclass this week. Lots of good stuff happening. Take up one of those, uh, those advisor uh, positions. There's only a few there. Make sure you turn up. Don't, uh, don't be slack and, and uh, forget it because I've spent the time and the energy and the money to have my advisors there ready to talk to you. It's your responsibility now to step up and actually get the most out of this market. Get the most out of yourself. Get the most out of your circumstances. And I don't care how good or bad your current circumstances are, there will always, always be a place you can start. Anyway, that's it for me, guys. I will catch you next week on another Intelligent Property Investor Masterclass. Bye for now.